of the Alabama Democratic Party, I want to offer our congratulations to all of those folks that have been inducted into our Alabama Democratic Party Hall of Fame. Ruth Johnson Owen, Stuart Burkhalter, Paul Hubbard, and Joe Reed have all served this party and this state well. Tonight and in the years to come, we will stand on their shoulders as well as so many others that have gone before them. What a difference a year makes. And while some have sounded the death knell of the Alabama Democratic Party, I want to let you know that your chairman is encouraged in the knowledge that this too shall pass. We the people of goodwill who love democracy and cherish the inherent right of all people to be free will answer the question, how long shall this last, with a proclamation, not long, my brother, not long. For 135 years, it was easy in Alabama to be a Democrat. While this party ruled Alabama's political culture, but today, as we find ourselves on the road to a new way, we look around us and see that many of our good weather travelers no longer have the courage to face the storm. Look around you tonight and you will see the new face of the Alabama Democratic Party. And for those of you that have been to dinners like this in past years, take notes of the people that are not here, for that is the truest measure of the fact that this party now belongs to the people. There are no more back rooms in the Democratic Party of Alabama. As I entered this room tonight, I was given a list of dignitaries, uh, those people that we usually introduce at gatherings like this, and I put it in my pocket, and it remains there, but we are, each one of us, dignitaries in our own way. We are no more or no less than the other, but we will stand against the winds of injustice, arm in arm, and side by side until honesty and fair play in government in this state is restored. You know and I know that Alabama Democrats believe in the American dream. We believe that for many in our state, only an education will open a door to opportunity. Alabama Democrats in our state support job creation and real tax reform, where out-of-state corporations can no longer take the best of us and pay only a pittance in return. We stand proud as Alabamians and as Americans when the flag goes by, and we cry at the loss of an American soldier. Alabama Democrats support government employees and teachers who bear the task of fueling the engine and expectations for education. And all they ask in return is fair pay and a pension. Alabama Democrats believe in lifting those up that cannot stand, speaking for those that cannot speak, and fighting for those that have no chance. You and I believe that a man's worth is measured not by the color of his skin, but by the content of his heart. And all men, women, and children in this state and in this country deserve respect and kindness rather than repudiation and hate filled rhetoric said in the name of Jesus. I met a man in Birmingham who stood much taller than me, a Democrat before but now proclaimed no more. A proud and mighty lawyer was he. And in anger he shouted, can't you see? I have no more use for you. You now can do nothing for me. Being a Democrat is no longer about me. It is about us. It is about our neighbors and our families. 
It is about those that will come after us. It is about gaining ground for justice, honor, and Alabama's soul. As we look over the cliff of despair and into the dismal dawning of a 21st century civil rights crisis in our state and in our country, the irony of coming together to this position for my family is not lost on me, my wife Peggy or our sons Burns and Lee. We have lived our lives on the pages of Alabama history. Peggy and I and our family cannot erase, erase the sands of time and the mistakes of those that have gone before. But we can offer hope for change and be resolute in our commitment to climb each hill together one day at a time. There will not be another stand in the schoolhouse door, but there will be children who are denied the right to a college education because of insidious financial and social barriers. Never again will the world be horrified at the sight of billy clubs, dogs, and tear gas at the foot of the Edmund Pettus Bridge, but the world is going to soon look at us and say, it looks like you never really changed after all. There will be no church bombings or fire hoses on the streets of Birmingham. But unless we do something about it, there will continue to be false prophets of goodwill who will attempt to wash away our hopes for a fair and just Alabama. The question then that you must ask me and I must ask you is what do we do? Because you know and I know that if we do nothing, if we wait for someone else to fix this, if we say it is not my job, then this party, this state, and all of us will lose. It is no longer just about winning elections here in Alabama. It is about fairness and justice and respecting each other. We can no longer afford to look over our shoulders and brood over our past angers and disappointments with one another. We must accept where we are today, but we must believe that tomorrow will be better. We must become like the long distance runner who knows that the first mile of a race is not as important as the last when the body aches and the soul is weary, but pressing on is the only choice that we have. If Peggy and I were writing today, the speech that her father gave in January of 1963, something like this. Let us rise to the call of freedom-loving blood that is in us and send our answer to the tyranny that clanks its chains upon the South. In the name of the greatest people that have ever trod this earth, I draw the line in the dust and toss the gauntlet before the feet of tyranny. And I say, justice today, justice tomorrow, and justice forever.